Titanoboa. Holy moly, the giant prehistoric snake that just keeps on giving, or in many ways, should we say, keeps growing. As if the slithering serpentine leviathan of the jungle wasn't already terrifyingly large enough. You see, over here at Life's Biggest Questions, we've contorted all manners of fantastic beasts and gigantic monsters through our hypothetical redefining machine, giving them extra physical properties or shaking up their genetic makeup in an effort to see how they would have potentially altered the course of ancient history. So without further delay then, let's see how this giant serpent would have fared if it never stopped growing. Hello Internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your dismodded floating voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, what if the Titan of Boa Snake doubled in size? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2016's Gods of Egypt, which, let's face it, was an absolute disaster of a movie. But hey, the CGI was pretty damn good. And also, on that note of a giant python, if we're going to see what the Titan of Boa would be like at twice the size, we may as well give them the ability to breathe fire whilst we're at it, right? Nah, I'm just kidding. That would be a ridiculous idea. Just like the plot of Gods of Egypt, where the answer to the question, would you like dragons or snakes, seemingly was a simple yes. But anyway, enough of that. You get the picture. Let's see what's happening with the old giant snake waiting patiently in the corner. Now, if you're scratching your head thinking, wait, what the hell is a titan of boa? I would politely inform you that life's biggest questions have a list longer than your arm of equally intriguing and potentially terrifying hypothetical scenarios that we've pitted this ancient creature against. And if you're so inclined to expanding your paleobiological knowledge, then now would be high time to trudge through them and see exactly just what we'd be facing off against here. But for those of you that haven't, let's first take a brief look at the ancient titan of the jungle and just exactly what he's got cooking under the hood. To do that, we'll have to cast our hypothetical gaze back a while, well, 58 million years back to be precise, to a period just a few million years after the fall of the dinosaurs. And now, as you may know from that gaping hole of an asteroid, there was quite a void left behind after the fall of the Lizard Kings. Now, back in the day, pretty much everything was downright huge. In fact, everything was hotter, wetter, and far, far bigger. Trees had wider leaves down to the massive amount of rainfall, 150 inches or so per year, and temperatures would hover around a stifling mid to high 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Turtles had shells twice the size of a manhole cover and crocodiles were more than a dozen feet long. But all of them paled in comparison to the Titan Aboa, the undisputed lord of the jungle, a snake that measured in at between 42 and 49 feet long and weighing more than a ton at a mean weight of 2,500 pounds. It was as long as a school bus and weighed more than a small rhino. It looked pretty much identical to the modern day boa constrictor, yet behaved more like today's water dwelling anaconda. To cut a long story short, it was absolutely freaking huge and also terrifying. And to cut an even longer story shorter, it was unrivaled in its swamp jungle home. It was prey to nothing and predator to everything. If it wanted to eat anything, a turtle, a crocodile, it would, and it did. But what if it never stopped? eating? What if for thousands of years, instead of eventually going extinct due to it succumbing to the shifting climate, it just kept eating and that 50 foot long Titan Aboa eventually doubled in its size? Just imagine the sight of a creature that big, never mind just a snake. 100 feet of pure, unrivaled serpentine flesh. To put that into perspective, the largest animal on the planet and the largest animal ever known to have existed is the blue whale that measured roughly 98 feet in length. This guy, our Titan Aboa buddy, would be bigger than that, probably. The thing is though, down to its massive size, the blue whale has evolved to a point where its body is actually pretty constrained to not being a predator. Despite the size of its mouth, the dimensions of a blue whale's throat prevents it from swallowing an object wider than a beach ball, down to the fact that to sustain itself in the ocean, it eats around 40 million krill in a single day. And when fully expanded, its mouth is large enough to hold around 90 tons of food and water. And that's where our problem would lie for the Titan of Boa. Being that size, it would have to seriously augment its behavior to sustain itself in this brave new world. And in the likeliest scenario, that would have probably have meant leaving the hot, humid swamps of its native prehistoric Mexico. Hey, you know how the saying goes, right? Big snake in a small pond. 
I guess. The point is though, here's where things get super difficult for the hypothetical Titan of Boa, and at such a huge size it would have had to slither off to pastures new just to sustain itself, with the likeliest prey being giant prehistoric fish that swam in the oceans, down to its genus being dominantly Piscivorus. To head into the oceans though, that would have meant sacrificing its most important of amenities. You see, the Titan of Boa liked it hot, in fact so hot that the likeliest scenario for the creature's habitat would have had to have averaged around 32 degrees Celsius for it to have thrived. That's exactly why, still to this day, larger ectothermic animals are found in the tropics where it is hottest, and smaller ones are found farther from the equator. For the Titan of Boa to have survived and thrived at twice the size, it would have meant moving to pastures new with very specific parameters, somewhere in the ocean that was really, really hot. And guess what? Luckily for the Titan and Boa, the oceans were absolutely boiling at this point in history. Well, I say that hyperbolically because they were just really, really warm. The warmest actually being a portion of the North Atlantic where rapid volcanic activity would eventually lead to the creation of Iceland. But there's another problem for our Titan and Boa to face because sadly, it's not all plain sailing or slithering. During the Paleocene, there was, well, there was quite a shortage of fish. And by shortage, I mean after the whole extinction event thing, nearly 90% of all calcifying plankton were destroyed, and it would take roughly another 7 million years to fully recover. And guess what? Our Titan the Boa is a big, growing boy, and it's going to take a little bit more than a few ancient clams and snails to keep him fed. You see, whatever the habitat, an apex predator needs its prey, and it's pretty slim pickings at most points of the Paleocene era for a creature the same size as a modern day blue whale. Yeah, there are sharks and stingrays for the most part, but the hunting methods of the Titan of Boa are based on physical constriction or straight up whole hot swallowing to feed on its prey, and as we said previously, it would have had to rapidly adapt its feeding processes similar to that of a blue whale to have even existed. And also, there's another problem. You see, at this period of time, it is thought that a particular species of shark was filling in the niche left behind by the sparsely populated ocean, feeding on the other sharks and stingrays that remained. A species of shark known as the Adodus obliquus, the prehistoric ancestor of the Megalodon, that measured in at over 40 feet. And guess what? He would have been just as, if not hungrier, than the Titan of Boa, favouring the similar warm waters that the giant snake would have had to have favoured. And that can only mean one thing. Trouble. Well, you know how the old saying goes, there's always a bigger fish even if you are a snake. Well, there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, what if the Titan of Boa snake doubled in size? What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add on the matter? Then let us know your thoughts down below, as well as any intriguing insights that you'd like to share. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Spirit Thief says, if you're a disembodied voice, what is doing the floating? You're nothing but vibrations in the air then. There's no physical part of you floating, so how can you be floating? Hey, buddy, if I knew the answer to that, do you think I'd really be sitting around floating in the void of the cosmos, eternally trying to answer question after question? Well, I don't know what I'd be doing, but still, it'd probably be something. Oh, I don't know. Well, after that existential crisis, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been on the Body Float Voice Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy.